It's time to talk entertainment on News 6 at 9, and that means it's time to mix it up. <laughs> CJ from Mix 105.1 joins us now. Always so happy to see you here on our Wednesday. It's a beautiful Wednesday, too. It's oh, so nice. nice outside. My goodness. Yeah, we've been talking about it all morning. Mm -hmm. When you step outside, it just feels oh. so fresh and fabulous. It's here, finally. I mean, yes. It's probably for like a day, but right, it's not. Right. I mean, we're still in the 70s and 80s. It's just amazing what happens when you take the humidity out. Oh, I know. Beautiful. It's magical. Okay, we've talked about the increase of injuries associated with vaping and how state leaders are cracking down on teen vaping. But now teens are sharing their stories, hoping to really drive that message home. Yeah, this is kind of scary because teens are actually sharing sharing the journeys of their, that they're going through because of the repercussions of vaping. I mean, they're sharing photos of their lungs that show black spots on mm. them. And we're talking about 17-year-old children. Um, you know, vapes were supposedly invented to get people off of cigarettes, but what happened is it fell into the hands of these kids. And so um, it's, it's insane. I think it's something like 450 children um, have been diagnosed with lung-related illness in the past year. Um, so that's an alarming number. And so, you know, the CDC has come out and said, hey, they're not safe. Let's, you know, try to keep them out of the, the hands of the children. The Trump administration uh, is remo removing flavored e-cigarettes from the market. I mean, it, this is a lot of retailers have stopped selling um, mm -hmm. vaping products. Products. Um, but it's alarming that this is happening. But these kids are sharing their stories. They're saying, hey, listen, this is what's happening to me, and I've only been doing it for a year. Um, one girl um, was in a coma for uh, a little over a week, a wow. medically induced coma, yeah. and she said she feels like she lost nine months of her life. Mm. Another boy is starting um, a movement online called Hashtag Lung Love, and it's basically mm. just, you know, hey, this is what happened to me. You know, join my journey, and if you're in the same position as I am, share your story as well. And so hopefully through social media, kids will open their eyes and realize how dangerous this is. And often it's more powerful hearing from your peers yeah. versus adults being like, don't vape, you know, other kids spreading that message, I think will be more impactful. And it's gotta be scary too, to look at somebody else at 17, 16, 19 even, and say, wow, you are so young and going through this. That could be me. Yeah, because you know? there's, I mean, there's a big difference between cigarettes and e-cigs. Yeah. And I mean, it probably all started through social media as mm -hmm. well, seeing, you know, other teenagers vaping. So maybe this might actually work, you know, to basically fight the vaping epidemic. Let's hope. And it's been a big fear for a lot of parents, but I, we have reported that a lot of times it's black market. Mm -hmm. Things that kids are buying from people that, you know, are not down at the gas station right. or at a bike, vaping shop. So that's important to note too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, a news anchor from Las Vegas is reporting on her own heartbreaking story. And she says this all started with a rare abnormal pregnancy. This is, this is so, and I never have heard of this before. Um, she thought she was pregnant, um, and apparently it turned out it's um, a molar pregnancy, which is where the body um, thinks it's pregnant, so it starts to, but it doesn't miscarry. Instead, the tissue continues to grow, and it becomes invasive tissue. And it's like one in a thousand women can have this happen where it turns into cancer. Wow. Um, so she's going through chemo, and she said this is, and, you know, we were talking about this previously. She's documenting this whole journey. She's I mean, reporting She's reporting it. She's yes. reporting it. She's like, hey, I went through this last night. The, you know, this is my blood transfusion. Um, this is something I had no idea even could happen. And then to find out it can happen happen one in a thousand. That seems like a pretty, you know, common number. Right. You know, that doesn't seem like it's rare. The good news here is she said this is highly treatable. Yes. So she has an excellent prognosis, but it will take that form of aggressive chemo to knock this out. Well, and you know, some of the symptoms of finding this out are things that could be, in, you know, in any normal day, you know, nausea, vomiting, you know, a little bleeding. So it's things like that that make you really, you know, you really got to pay attention when mm -hmm. you're going through these things. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you see something that might be slightly off, Maybe go get it checked out because I, I have a feeling had she not checked this out, it could have been a little worse. Right. Well, yeah. and she's a mother of two. She's had right. to take months off of work. She obviously can't be reporting and doing what we do every day. So it's just been uh, mm -hmm. very brave of her to share her story in the way that she has in a very open way. Yeah. And Julie, you said you think it's it might be a coping mechanism, the reporting on mm. this. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's probably a safe space for her and what she's comfortable doing. And also she feels like she's helping people yeah. as well by sharing this information and spreading information. Yeah, because I had no idea this existed. Yeah. So and neither you know, did I. You, knowledge is power. And yeah. now we're talking about it. Exactly. In Orlando. All right, the final chapter of the Star Wars Skywalker saga hits theaters in December, which is huge. And CJ, we're getting a look at the final trailer. 
This is, you know. Okay, what's wrong? Uh, what's wrong? <laughs> it's just so many people are, are are talking about this already. I know so many people have bought tickets to multiple screenings of Correct. this film. The Rise of Skywalker. This is the end of the saga. And they knew when they were going into this, this had to have a good resolution because mm -hmm. they're like, this is the end. You know, this D is. This but is, does it? This is the movie. Well, let's hope. I mean, I, I, we don't know <laughs> because we only see it as a trailer. Um, but, you know, in the trailer, you know, there are some really, you know, uh, amazing scenes. Um, where you see um, just, I mean, look at this. I mean, look at the, the graphics and just this, I don't know. Go ahead, just, go ahead. I, I, I'm, I'm lost for words. Mix it because up, I'm, It's exactly what's happening in my brain because um, it's funny because growing up I wasn't a huge Star Wars fan and then I started getting into it and now, you know, I am. I, I want to go back and watch all of them before right. this one comes out. Yeah. I did. I did that yeah. before I went to Galaxy's Edge in California. Oh. Oh, are you bragging that, that you went to well, California? Well, a little brag. Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> that's, what brag. You're doing? that's what that's called. But uh, yeah, no, because it, you kind of do need to go back and see some of the yeah. old ones to understand these new ones. And Carrie Fisher, I heard mm -hmm. we're going to see her one yep. more time. Yep. She makes a return in this. Uh, Mark Hamill makes a return. You know, so everyone that you know, I was looking at the cast list, and it's so incredibly long of everyone that's returning. Yeah. Um, because it is the end, you know, right. you have to have that resolution, you have to have that, I hope this is fulfilling, you know, and so we'll find yeah, out on December 2nd. Is that part. it? You're just a little nervous? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think one. I think it's the last, because it's the last one, yeah. you want to make sure that it's good, you want to make sure that it, you know. You have all the feelings. Exactly, that it's it, it comes full circle. Yeah, I mean, C-3PO delivered a line, taking one last look at my friends. You know, I mean, does like... that not break your heart? <laughs> so, we'll see. December second. Yeah. You know, okay. We're, we're, you know. Do you have your tickets? On our calendar. I don't have mine, but I know Dana on our morning show yes. has oh, hers. Oh yeah, she's yeah, a big star. About she that. took yeah. a day off just to go look at merchandise. Go one time Dana. And, you know, so yeah, she's, yes. she's a big fan. She's committed. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. And of course, we have our precise pinpoint weather forecast on Friday. Listen, if this weather holds up, I'm telling you, you it's might not. be pinpointing me. It's not. It's not. It's she not. said it's not. So yeah, no. there you go. So maybe you've got an event coming up or, you know, you just want to maybe think about going to the beach because it's Florida. It's beach weather. Yeah, always. 52 weeks yeah. a year, except when there's a hurricane. Uh, so Candace will pinpoint that and I will just be the avenue to get you to her. That works. All right. Well, it's always fun. Absolutely. Thanks, CJ.